Արի երեկոս երելի արենագիրցներ, անգամ եվս կմիանանք ձեզի վերատար սայտատակրով, որում նպատակն է ոգտագար լալ Հայաստանի և մաս կազմել Հայաստանի ընգերային դնեցական և կաղական կյանքին։ Այսօրվա իմ ձրակիրը ա Ամբես որ գխնդրեմ, որ ձեր զավակներուն և տորնիկ դրում դրում դա, որ այս զրակիրը հիմ ամիջ աբես թիտեն։ Շնագատյուն։ Thank you for watching the Veratarts program, which is Return to Armenia, which that encourages Armenians in the diaspora to participate in the social, economic and political life of Armenia, and uh, help Armenia to make, it, to make it a stronger country. Today, my guest is uh, Robert Davidian. Welcome, Robert. Thank you very much, Harry. And uh, uh, Robert is a filmmaker and a, a video producer, as well as a human rights documentary filmmaker. That means that he is involved with uh, uh, issues that uh, the world is concerned especially Armenia, mm -hmm. and he has, he's, uh, he has a few vi uh, film uh, documentaries, uh, and now he's going to introduce us a little. Let us first of all find out who is Robert Davidian. Uh, tell us, how did, you, how did you happen that you got involved in, in, in Armenia, and, and I know that you're a producer. What can you tell us? Well, first of all, I'm born in New York. My parents are born in New York. So I'm American Armenian. Uh -huh. uh, I, there are four children in our family, and they are very American. But I've been going to Armenia for 15 years, on and off, doing documentary work and doing promotion work. One of them was for the American University of Armenia. And uh, so I fell in love with Armenia. You can't not fall in love with Armenia. After going there, you get bitten like a like a bug, and then you're you're stuck mm -hmm. um, in a good way. And when did you start? That was 1995. That was wow. Yeah. Okay. And and um, and so uh, each time I would go back, sometimes just for my own vacation, I would uh, meet people, and I have many friends there, and I would talk to them openly and honestly, and hear them say they didn't have much hope that things could change in Armenia, that there was so much corruption, so many problems just to survive. Uh, and I thought, well, it's horrible to live without hope. How can anyone just live with no hope? So there's always hope. Um, while there's life, there's hope. So uh, I thought, well, there, there must be, it, it might be nice to make a movie to inspire people in Armenia to know that they can make the change, their own change, whatever they want, uh, by protesting, by um, just serving uh, in the community, and um, living in a democracy. And so that's how I came up with the idea of making a movie uh, called Armenian Activists Now, to interview um, people that are doing it, that are activists, and they, um, in turn, on film would inspire young Armenians that are ready to do something but don't know what to do. Well, they can pick their sphere. Uh, this movie you're going to see uh, will show you uh, several spheres of activism, from non-smoking and animal rights to women's rights uh, and um, you know the the ecology and yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, and you did a great job, really, but uh, I mean... Uh, I had a co-producer uh, in Armenia, and uh, she was uh, instrumental and vital to um, choose the people to interview uh, because she lives there and she knows what's happening. And she also works for the government, and she does not want her name to be known. And that's sad, but true, because of this, the situation there, where she could get fired if um, someone didn't like so what So the main she did. thing is that you have been to Armenia how many times now? 
Uh, 11 times. 11 times, since 1995. That's correct. And now you probably know more people in Armenia than you know here. I do. I feel connected with my Armenian friends on Facebook and, uh, and can't wait to go back. I'm going back in two weeks. I'll be in Armenia for the elections. You are the exact candidate for a return to Armenia and uh, and it's here good to is be a here. good example that you all folks, you folks can do the same and uh, this gentleman is not afraid, there's nothing to be afraid of. Oh On no, country, nothing to be afraid of. We have to uh, be very uh, persistent uh, in uh, doing what we should do. So let us start with the first uh, uh, documentary birth of a movement, Armenian activists now. It's about 41 minutes, and then we'll join you back again. Thank you. Unfortunately, in Armenia, we do not experience free and fair uh, elections. People lie, people cheat. It's part of the, part of the Soviet psychology. Boys, young boys of 18, 20 dying in the army, being killed, and the ones who killed them never being prosecuted and put in jail. Violence against women is an issue in Armenia, and we need to talk about it. If you are not majority, if you are not one of them, uh, you suffer. If this process will go to the active stage, we will have a water uh, polluted by heavy and toxic metals. It will be a catastrophe. Whenever people do not see that they are citizens, that they have a respect, that their vote has a respect, they just want to escape this country. I wonder if anyone thinks that uh, he or she is going to avoid this kind of injustices. It can happen to all of us. And unless we are together and we organize to fight things, it's going to happen again and again. There's a good group of active citizens, young people, older people who are really coming together to address these issues. Today we see that when we are doing protests, even with 20 people, the government and the ministries, they are sending a lot of police because they are scared of even a few dedicated activists. <laughs> I see all these people all around, these policemen who are not really men, let me say so. They're trying to just to fight against normal, usual people. They are visiting, policemen visiting to ordinary, ordinary people, houses and asking them and pushing them to not participate. It is, it, it is illegal to do that, no? Of course. The whole system is such a corruption. There is no place for human rights thinking. When you see that somehow the law does not work in your country, when you see that there are laws that are only on the paper and then are not being implemented, you already lose your trust. There's also a lot of fear towards addressing things that is related directly or indirectly to government. Also, there are a lot of dangers. <laughs> They are here to fight for their freedom uh, because they want to fight for the future of them, their children and they want to live in rule of law society.
if we act persistently and intensely, you can make a difference. Of course we will succeed. I am Sona Aivazian, Transparency International Anti-Corruption Center. Givok Tergabrilian and I'm the country director of Eurasia Partnership Foundation. My name is Alpine Galfayan. I work for the Institute for Democracy and Human Rights. Artur Sakuns, uh, one other office of Helsinki Citizens Assembly. I'm Lara and I work at the Women's Resource Center in Armenia. I'm Amikon Hopsepian. I work in this organization. Uh, the full name is Public Information Lead of Knowledge. We call it just PINK. Shushan Doidoyan, head of the Freedom of Information Center. I'm Tibian Chorokian. We have initiated the non-smoking campaign in Yerevan. Statevik Dafkian, temporary disability allowances. Varam Sogomonyan, this city belongs to us. I'm Olya Azatyan. I'm involved in a lot of activities that is connected with the activism in Armenia. Dan Sarkisyan, PR uh, responsible of uh, Women's Rights Center in Armenia. My name is Carla Garatedian. Sahat Petrosian. Nare Araman. Sarman Garibian. Zanus Fatsetian. My name is Amase. Եթե մենք ունենք այսպիսի երկիր, ուրեմը մեզանի ձյուրականչուրը ինչ-որ տեղ, ինչ-որ պահի, ինչ-որ սխալ գործել է։ Ուրեմը իրավիճակը շտկելու ճանապարը մեզանի ձյուրականչուրը պետք աշխատի իր սխալները ուղելու վրա։ That's the key for the democracy. They need to participate in the decision making which relates to their everyday lives. Everyone, democracy is not for one and is not formed by one. It's something which takes time, takes effort, and takes everybody's efforts. We are the people I think this is a very important and very encouraging development which started in 2008 after the presidential elections, unsuccessful presidential elections because they were all rigged and 10 people were killed during the protests. But at the same time, this was a new period of awakening. And since 2008, many youth groups are being organized. It just changed something in the minds of the people that we can be proactive, we can be actors of change. And now there are more than 10 youth groups. Uh, some of them are quite experienced already. They know how to organize pickets, sit-ins, how to write petitions and this kind of stuff. Some of them are very new. And I think it's really important that these groups start collaborating together and start growing into something which could be called maybe a social movement. <laughs> That would be really a turning point in the history when people could really be in charge of changing things without uh, wanting to get into power, to the official power structures. Corruption is in a is in a high level in Armenia. Uh, mostly in schools and in the in universities it's illegal but i can't uh, can't say that it is acceptable or not because uh, in some places it helps us uh, to uh, to do uh, such things that we can't do without it armenia is uh, in the highest places in in terms of corruption in education sphere and this is absolutely I, 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 we can't understand that. There is corruption in schools, people are paying to get their diplomas instead of uh, trying to study. And um, This hurts the whole country. This hurts every sphere. Yes, and it also has to do with the thinking, you know, when people uh, think, okay, I can't do anything in terms of law, let's just pay the money and get things done in an easy way. Um, but this makes corruption flourish and continue. Everybody wants their children to do the best, so it's a very difficult position to be in. I know one girl who didn't give in to the corruption and had to take her children to another country. I know people who have given in to the corruption, regretted it, but it was the only way they could see forward for their children. But unfortunately, until their salaries become better, until their working conditions become better, it's only going to be repeated. 
If you ask people, did you ever give a kickback, they say no. If you ask them what's the biggest problem in Armenia, they say kickback. We're facing uh, in our daily activity with different aspects of uh, corruption, but in some cases, uh, the group, different groups of population, uh, this situation acceptable. But we have also cases uh, when, when you're not giving the bribes, then it can work maybe a bit longer, but it can work most of the petty, lower-level corruption can be avoided if people uh, do not offer to give uh, bribe money. What does your organization do to fight corruption? Well, it's a huge relation. What we can do in regard to consumer protection or anti-corruption activities in this sphere, it's, it's the improvement in legislation. Because when you have to go from here the, from one institutional body to another institutional body because you did some documents, for example. And this red tape also causes many uh, corruption risks. So if we uh, decrease this red tape, maybe it will, it, uh, will uh, result in corruption decrease as well. There is some progress. Uh, there are some more uh, officials being punished for the bribery or for some other uh, manifestations of corruption. However, we do not feel that the highest level, and people know those names, some of the members of parliament, some of the ministers, um, they never get, we didn't, didn't see them getting punished. I believe only on revolution. This government, this power, is deeply and definitely corrupted. We are in the state capturing corruption in Armenia. One of the problems is that, for example, international organizations and institutions are paying the government to fight against corruption. And I believe this government is not able to fight corruption because they are the most corrupt people and they are the ones who are sponsoring corruption. Last year we read uh, in several newspapers, they published that the second president, Kocharyan, he has four billion dollars of, um, of money. So his money alone will be enough to pay the whole external debt of Armenia, you know? And uh, how can um, international organization pay these people to fight corruption in Armenia? This is ridiculous. But the revolution can change things. <laughs> and you need to demand from the public officials uh, to uh, perform uh, better because they are managing your assets and they are uh, governing your country and they are elected by you. And once you act, you can believe it's it's very difficult. It's very difficult to achieve a success in a country where there is no democracy, where uh, there is big corruption and when highest level officials are engaged in corruption. But after some time, after a long time probably, you will definitely achieve success and we believe in that. I want a clean air. I need a clean air and I need our country to save our country and I do it. Thank you. <laughs> We must save our nature, that our nature uh, save us. Forests, they are being cut and uh, that's another problem that must be solved. We have tried to involve opinion makers and one of them is famous singer Serge Tankian. He was in Marriott Hotel, he arrived very late and we requested him to come to, and talk to us and, and he, he came. came. Yes. Amenuna Margare Warren came on Amenu. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, 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 <laughs> Ecological problem uh, is the social problem also. If people uh, are active, we can do uh, something, but if they don't, we can't do anything. I am here because of the 
huge, huge volumes of mining of the Armenian, very small territory. The government doesn't even have information about this, or they do not at least provide information about the toxic substances uh, available in the dumping tails or the public health situation. You have a place like Datev and the uh, uh, strip mining very close to it. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, and they go on without any environmental assessments. Valery Mejlumian, he's the owner of a company which is going to do mining in Terut, in the north of Armenia. His company is owning Ala Verdi's copper factory and you will see the whole smoke coming out over the city. And for 10 years they haven't even bothered to put any kind of filters which would protect the people and the environment. And this is the Speaker of the Parliament uh, who is in charge of many uh, laws encouraging mining and he has his own businesses. He was trying to build a restaurant inside a reserve which is not allowed. Some officials have another understanding who are the owners of this city and they couldn't understand what it means. This city belongs to us. Before this building was here, it was all green? It was all green. They cut many trees here. How catastrophic destruction was made here in this part of the park. On the end of April, uh, this uh, Facebook group was formed and uh, just a few days after that was the first action, a silent action. We made a life chain uh, surrounding the park to show that we want to preserve this park. So this is a public area and the city has to consider our opinion. I can say we gathered 20,000 signatures with a petition sent to all high officials in Armenia and some protest actions, photo exhibitions showing the park what's going on now and still there is nothing done here. So we have to engage more citizens because we see citizens are more engaged until the last moment they can save their parks. For example, in Dragon's Park in Yerevan we have a successful story. So. Uh, this is a two-sided movement, so to say, to bring the officials to responsibility and to engage more citizens. So this is this. what did you say to him? Uh, he says we are not allowed to enter or to look at this building. Why are we not allowed to look I at it? I don't know, they are just nervous. Well, we can look at it here. So he's saying uh, that you are not allowed to enter this site, but this is a public area. So I don't know why the people are so nervous, because maybe of uh, environmental activists who come frequently here. And this is our space. This is still our space. And in 2010, government decided to tone down the, an existing and standing open A cinema hall. The building is unique with this design because it was built in 1960s. A young architect designed this open A hall in the backyard of the cinema Moscow. And the amphitheater was just flying on, on the sky with very tiny and unique columns. We sent these 24,000 signatures to the president head of government, deputy uh, minister or prime minister, to Catholics, to everybody. Uh, so we don't have the final success. They didn't agree to put the, monu the, the building in the monument, list of monuments protected by government, but now the building is standing. So this is the success. We have lack of awareness among the society about the harmful effects of the cigarette smoke. 
it is combined with the imperfect legislation and poor enforcement of even the existing legislation. These are the main problems of this society to tackle any problem, including the problem of smoking in public areas, which is very harmful for children and for pregnant women especially. We handled more than 500 stickers to the means of public transportation, which are non-smoke area, and the drivers that they provide the non-smoking environment. We have identified 37 bars, cafes and restaurants in Yerevan, which are smoke-free or partly smoke-free. So we handled certificates of gratitude them with about 200 young people. There are many surveys in the world which shows that no business uh, have gone the dropping down process after making it a smoke-free environment. That's why the campaign is so much uh, successful because we had many policy makers and decision makers around us. What about Mashutka? Can you do you like Mashutka? <laughs> no, I hate it. Really, I hate it. It's terrifying me every time. The problem is that it's uh, always overcrowded and people have to stand in marshrutkas and small marshrutkas and it's not comfortable and it's not safe. Even doctors say that if you're not for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you can have aches for a long time. There are problems with just paying for your tickets because you have to pay to the driver and sometimes he has to give you back some money and he, he was always busy with this just go coins and maybe he can even crash. Our friends are the organizers of this action, so we just got to know about it from Facebook. With the posters there are many lozums like I demand uh, dignified transport, I demand transport to work 20 hours in a day, I demand uh, just safety transport. What did he say? He said he's angry that they wrote that the passenger is potato. He asked me. If, uh, the passenger is not potato. Yes. <laughs> is passenger potato? Yes. Is it the owner of the, um, the city government? No, it's just uh, uh, like uh, persons, different persons. They are owners of different oligarchs. Numbers. Yeah, mostly oligarchs. Even sometimes uh, members of our parliament are. Isn't that illegal? I guess that yeah, it's For illegal because the member of parliament shouldn't have business. No business right. But in Armenia we have the opposite. Why are you closing? Why are you stopping? Because we decided to have action for, for one hour only. But it's not the last one. It's the first one. It's only the beginning. <laughs> on women's issues. More women are active in different fields, like in civil society mostly. In our government you see that women have no say. In our circles, in activists, men are like, we really are equal in the activism. What we're doing is empowering women in Armenia to take a more active place in society, to be decision makers, to make changes. We have managed to, to actually change the law and we have managed to restore the rights of any woman who would be pregnant and would be on maternity leave and any man or woman who would be temporarily disabled and not able to work and would be able to get government benefits for this. Do you think there's an issue with domestic violence? Well, that's an issue as well. But with so many women activists, I think that's going to change too. But other people say that, oh, don't talk about this, you know, it's something personal, it should be uh, stay in the family, and by doing that, you're destroying the family, telling women to voice their concerns, and, but to those people, we say, what's destroying the family? If there's violence in the family, it's already destroyed. There is no such violence in our country, and, uh, I think everything is all right in that uh, in that area. In that area. So there's no violence against women in Armenia. No. And sometimes they say, "Oh, it's tradition. It's our culture. It's like that." But what we try to tell them, you know, our culture doesn't say that you you need to to beat to beat up your wife. 
Zarui Petrosian was beaten by her husband and by her mother-in-law. Domestic violence, I want to say, as you know, is a definition that there is no reason for it because it's all an issue of control. Uh, but she was asked to um, racket money from uh, her family and when she did not deliver the sums of money, she was beaten. So Zarui Petrosian, tragically through her death, activated activism and domestic violence issue in Armenia. There are some stereotypes uh, in our society, unfortunately, but I see the movement that uh, something there is, uh, is changing and uh, we are motivating them to promote that change. This is the Sexual Assault Crisis Center where, and we have the hotline here. And here are the public actions for November 25 to stop violence against women that we do every year. And it says uh, sexual violence is a crime. We have women's support and Robin Center, we have crisis centers in, the, in four regions, we have emergency shelters with transitional housing in Yerevan free psychological, legal, social, medical assistance to, for these women. Why are you here? Well, we are here because, because we now have an action, a street action called No to Domestic Violence. And this uh, action is um, such a, a little thing to do to prevent uh, domestic violence in Armenia against women and against their children in Armenia. So now we, uh, the men, especially men, uh, can write on the balloons uh, to uh, their word uh, no to domestic violence and then we can release all these balloons to the air so we think that this can help bring attention to especially men uh, who continue to subject their wives or children to domestic violence when the sun shines it shines for all of us <laughs> What, what is this? What are you doing here today? For, uh, for gender equality and uh, we believe that women and men should be equal. So we yes. did some flash mob yes. for everyone, for society, our society to show that we are equal. <laughs> the problem of gender equality exists and uh, this is a vitally important issue in Armenia. A lot of young men are out of the country. They are out for to Russia for work, and we have women, which is I think can be treated as positively, and so women can be we can have women revolution, evolution. <laughs> yes. Many people from Armenia have many many problems concerning people uh, who died in uh, armies. <laughs> There is also the case of Mariam Sukhudyan with the Nubarashen uh, school, boarding uh, school, where there was uh, cases of sexual abuse uh, and violence against children. Uh, 
հայ առաքելական եկեղծու ներկացությություներին և այլը և այլը ոչ մեկ իչ չունենալով արձագան, ոչ մեկ չերուզում պետովիլի ամանկապաղթություն նման she encouraged the, the girls to go report that to the police, and they did. But the next day, once it was on public TV, a lot of people got involved, and they were like, the principal was very upset, and he had some connections, probably in the ministry, or I don't know where, in the government. <laughs> And then they turned everything against Mariam, saying that she was the one who forced the children to say, uh, to say lies. The American ambassador to Armenia gave her a prize for human rights activists, and uh, it was very public, and all the <laughs> media covered it. And just a couple days after that, they released her, saying that it was wrong, that she was right, that the teacher did all this, and they arrested the teacher. <laughs> One of the teachers, not the principal, who also is involved because it's his school, and the teacher confessed that he accepted the charges. And based on the law in Armenia, if you do that, then your sentencing will be much lighter. Even if it's kids, even if it's sexual violence, they don't care. So from six to eight years, it was going down to three years maximum. He brought a lot of good letters, diplomas, certificates that the principal gave him. And he said, I'm, I, I'm a good father. So based on that, prosecutor wanted to give him one year and a half for all five kids who, mm, we said, no, we want two years, at least two years. And then we, we organized every day of the trial, we were in front of the court with big posters saying you are supporting a pedophile in Armenia instead of supporting our children and the courtroom was packed. We were not silent and the judge was getting frustrated and upset and whenever he was telling some, something not right we were like booing in the, in the courtroom. Then the final judgment came and he gave two years in jail. So we said okay, but that's not enough, but it's a beginning. People suffer because of being uh, national minorities, religious minorities, sexual minorities, uh, people who live with HIV, uh, people who have fewer opportunities. Uh, we moved here uh, in the beginning of this year. People are coming for what reason? Uh, for trainings, for counseling, for movie screening, for discussions, just to meet each other and talk about different issues. Usually we have uh, actions for um, HIV, for uh, like World AIDS Day, uh, AIDS Candlelight Memorial Day and several events uh, regarding sexual health. And every year, May 17, we organize Rainbow Flash Mob. It's International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. Just we want to make lives more colorful. <laughs> I want to save the dolphins. This week is devoted for uh, protecting dolphins all around the world. Dolphins are supposed to swim more than 40 miles per day. In this condition, dolphins are not uh, swimming this distance and they're swimming uh, with rounds, and which causes a uh, num number of uh, psychological uh, traumas. Ակնկալիքներ ունենք որպիսի կանգնեցնեն դելֆինարիումի աշխատանքը Հայաստանում եւ դուրս բերեն դելֆիններից այս ահավոր սարսափազդու վիճակի։ Դուք ասացիք ես լսեցի, չէ՞։ Հիմա ես ասեմ դուք լսեք։ Դուք աշխատում եք այդ դելֆինարիումը։ Հայ, դելֆինարիումը ամեն ամենը։ Ակնիկ, մտիճին ադամյան, բարձացրեք, այգու ոռոգման ջրի հարցը։ Եվ այ
If we succeed and hopefully we can free this, this do dolphins and they can uh, live their normal lives in, in the sea. We don't have any culture how to treat animals, how to treat uh, uh, to nature, because a massive uh, killing cannot uh, solve any population. problem with any animal. Do not kill stray dogs and sterilize every healthy dog uh, to solve that problem. Do you think it's easy to ask the government for information? Yes, it's quite easy to ask for information, but they. The information they give us is not true. <laughs> a few years ago, uh, people would think that um, we can't get any information from public bodies. How come can we ask the president or the prime minister or the mayor of Yerevan to provide us this and that information? But now, um, uh, many organizations and many individuals try to challenge that. And that's really working. You're, um, the, the law is in place, which makes any public body provide you information, uh, public information in five days. Maximum five days. But people are getting their answers within 15 to 20 days. So which means that this provision of law is widely uh, ignored or violated by state officials. There are several reasons why they delay information, but the most common problem is just lack of good management within state bodies. What kind of backing do you have? Do you ever, you sue, you sue um, the government? Yeah, we sue the government whenever we do not receive the requested information. Last year, we submitted a freedom of information request to one of the mayors of a city located in the northern part of Armenia called Stepanavan. And we received a very, very uh, strange answer. Uh, the written answer of that mayor said that uh, in order to provide you with this, the copies of the requested information, you need to pay 500 drams for per page of the requested information. But the information uh, composed of more than 100 pages, which means that a local NGO should pay about one, more than 1 million drams for provision of information. We appealed this case. The mayor told us that they have a special decision which obliges everyone to pay 500 drams. And we believe that this decision contradicts the constitution of Armenia and contradicts to the freedom of information law of Armenia. The court system satisfied our claims. By winning this kind of small cases, culture of openness someday will be developed in Armenia. Information gives a power to a citizen, and we want our citizens to be empowered by information. And if they lack it, they can apply us and we will help them. And this is our main mission, helping citizens. We in Armenia have a mission to promote good governance and public policy in order to combat corruption and promote democracy in the country. Before is Hansuneri Zevavoruma, the Katarvi Jogurti Komits, I Jamanak Patas Hanatusun is Hanutian Jogurti, Archiv Hasarakutian, Archiv. Get Zevavurdi, you have eight Hansuneri, Dutsun Katarvi. There is a Council of Justice, according to the Constitution of Armenia, which is composed of uh, several executive officers, including the President, who is the top of the Board of Justice. So this Board of Justice is assigning uh, judges. And if a judge dares do anything against the will of the President, the Prime Minister, or the people in the top executive, the judge is being dismissed, of course, for other reasons. They find most of the judges would have corruption history or something else, so they would easily find a compromise and take these people out. So it's a good way to control the judiciary, you know? Can this be fixed? This can be fixed by the by constitutional amendment. <laughs> Եթե մենք չենք կատարում ընտրություն, մենք հրաժարվում ենք մեր բաժին պատասխան ընտրությունից եւ դա դառնում է մեր ընտրությունը։
This is the beginning of the process and I don't know where it will lead to, but at least we have the idea of the place we want to live in, the idea of policies we want to create. And we have people who are volunteers who believe in what they are doing. And I think this is a big power and this is able to change things. Take the destiny of this country in your hands and uh, become active citizen of this country. Even in our country that is not so democratic and not so free, but if people really want to do some changes, they will reach it. So they need to go to elections, they need to vote, they need to understand that that's their very basic opportunity to make a difference, to vote. When you see that each resident of the community is able to conceive that he is able to contribute to the solving of the problem, we can see the change of that person. People should believe themselves that they can be the change agents. We uh, can do anything we want. Uh, just uh, All we need is just a little patience and a hard working. We have new, well-educated uh, young people who don't want to be part of this corrupt system. They want to bring an alternative. I believe if there is even 10 active people, 10 active young, strong people, something is going to be changed. Even one person, even one word can change Armenia, can change uh, our mentality, uh, can make it better. Come and join us because uh, our struggle is your struggle, our victory is everyone's victory. And it's cool, like it makes you happy to be engaged in, in something. Martin Luther King said uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So be confident that we can change anything. Of course we have hope because it's very di difficult to live uh, without hope. And I really do hope that one day we're going to live in a country uh, at least with a low level of corruption if not totally without it. You can fight corruption. You are protected by the law. The law is on your side. It will be hard just to struggle to, against them, but we are not going to just give up. The diaspora is listening to you. Men and women are listening to you, young and old. We're now between the old Armenia and the new Armenia, and you are part of the new Armenia. Don't think that you aren't being heard. Make a difference in Armenia. Every single person can make a difference. This idea is really very important because if anybody stands and says that we, I can't do anything, I can't change anything, we really won't change anything. The word impossible itself uh, says that it is possible. I am possible. <laughs>
government is there to make uh, life uh, more difficult and also to um, be corrupt and maybe uh, take money uh, illegally from the people. So I feel that the next movie should uh, attack that issue so that all these other issues can be fixed. And the next movie is uh, Armenian Activists Now, again. Um, um, the uh, m move to democracy, the march to democracy. And we have a five minute um, trailer showing a sample of that movie. Okay, I think it's not a bad idea to show it uh, now. Okay. Let's go ahead, thank you. Armenia and diaspora today find themselves face to face with the greatest identity crisis, the greatest strategic challenge of their separate and common histories. The law is given by the constitution and not by the oligarchs. There is one power, it is the citizen. Young people in Armenia just didn't like what was going on, and they said, we've had enough. This situation can be changed only if a democratic massive movement uh, comes to power, topples this uh, undemocratic regime, and then the justice will be done by the people, by the free people. What is the current situation with the politics in Armenia? Now it's very hot. The number one problem is the election. We need legal uh, government. We need, uh, we need legal parliament. It, uh, this is uh, uh, number one. What we are saying to people is bring government to accountability. Be active. Force this government to conduct fair and free elections. So some improvements over previous elections, but still some problems. Uh, some serious problems of vote buying, serious problems of uh, misuse of administrative resources to pay for the, the government party. There must be necessary two components. One component is prior elections, and the other component is independent judiciary system. Uh, unfortunately, in Armenia, uh, absent two components. How do we expect Armenia to thrive and to come out of the so-called culture of bribery when we do not take care of that very basic element, the judiciary, to be independent, to be not susceptible to influence. In law, we have a judiciary system, uh, called courts, courts, yes, which are depend on uh, ex executive uh, power. And if a judge dares do anything against the will of the president, the prime minister, or the people in the top executive, the judge is being dismissed, of course, for other reasons. They find most of the judges would have corruption history or something else, so they would easily find a compromise and take these people out. So it's a good way to control the judiciary, you know? Can this be fixed? This can be fixed by the by constitutional amendment. I'm a strong supporter of a different form of a government. It is a parliamentary government. There will be better checks and balances via parliamentary system. Uh, at the core, of course, it is important that Armenia turn into a nation that respects the rule of law. Yeah, rule of law. This is what we want, you know? Uh, we are not fighting for uh, high positions, for money, for wealth, no. We are fighting for freedom. It should be a separation of power between the executive and the judiciary. Uh, that doesn't exist today. Uh, and, and my understanding is that the current president and the current ruling party is opposed 
to that change. Yes. Uh, but that change is one that its time has come, and it is imperative if Armenia is to really, truly have uh, a society that we can all be proud of, that provides fair access to courts and justice in the end. They are not uh, here just to uh, elect someone, just elect master, and then be slaves. No, these people came here to be masters of their own destiny. Uh, this is why they are here. They are free thinkers. Very well done, uh, David. Uh, what else do you want to say about this? Uh, well, I would say that, you know, the problem in Armenia, uh, unlike the democracy here in the U.S., is that the judiciary, the judges, the courts are under the control of the president. So he can hire and fire judges. Uh, so the judge will try to do whatever the president wants so he doesn't lose his job, period. That's what's going on. And that's a major problem for getting fair judgments. If, and it's not just the president, the prime minister, anyone in the executive branch that says, you know what, we, um, <clears throat> in, in Mashtots Park, uh, they wanted to build an illegal uh, um, um, stores on, the, uh, on a public park. Um, so they just said it. It was not a zoning uh, approved law. It was just someone said they wanted to build it there and they started building anyway. So, so this needs to be separated, the judiciary and the executive branch to have at least uh, uh, the start of democracy where th people can get what they want rather than uh, be under the thumb of the president. So I, I plan to go there in February, which is just a couple of weeks away, uh, to cover the election and to make this movie that you just saw the trailer for. Um, it's a big job. Uh, we will cover not only the election, but the idea of a parliamentary system to change Armenia uh, to a fair uh, democracy. And that's why it's called uh, um, Move to Democracy. Well, uh, David, uh, Robert. Uh, Robert, I mean. <laughs> um, uh, so you're going to be in Armenia for how long? Uh, three weeks I'll be there from the election until March 2nd. Mm -hmm. which is uh, five years after March 1st, um, mm. 2008. And I hope that may maybe some other journalists will also be uh, going there. This is very important that uh, the diaspora uh, takes part in uh, the various, uh, the life of, uh, in Armenia, um, whether it's social, political, economic, and, and we saw the young generation um, uh, so active and therefore we must join them. And this is what we have to do, the young generation here with the young generation in Armenia, we can change the world. And we should not be afraid, we should be very persistent and, uh, and, uh, and very active. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is no, uh, no way out to bring forward change and, uh, and positive change so that Democracy will bring people together, will create a stronger Armenia, because we are, uh, uh, we are in, uh, around us, we have Turkey and Azerbaijan, very powerful enemies, and we're stuck in that area. We have no other choice. So, uh, David, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, please come and join us again. Okay, well, we should especially, have a movie. Especially when you uh, do that movie on the elections, you do your interviews, because this time it's going to be, some, some people are think to be very apathetic or very um, uninteresting type. No, no. Uh, but I hope that, what is your impression? Well, I think that people, instead of throwing your arms up and saying uh, it'll never change or someone else sh should change it, uh, no, it's, it's us. The only way change will happen is if we work for our own future Armenia, the new Armenia, um, that we will all, uh, we all have a piece of. I'm Armenian living in the US, but it's, it's ours. And so we should uh, have, a, have a new Armenia that's fair and free, 
that we can all maybe live there someday. But I want to point everyone out to this website, um, www.facebook.com slash Armenian Activist Now. Please go there. Please join the page and you will become informed of um, future activities, things that you can get involved with uh, here in Los Angeles and around the world. Uh, Armenian activists are not just in Armenia. We all are Armenian activists. Thank you, David. Robert. <laughs> Robert, I always <laughs> keep on going to... Uh, okay, Robert, thank you very much. Raga Tun, Usharutyan Amar, Yev Gahantibin, Yegov Chorik Shapti, Shepari.